So you have our duties, we have our values, but we also have our habits that we come to in the marriage. You know, so it's important that we also uh, learn good habits. And one of it, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, this very famous hadith, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazn wal ajzi wal kasl wal bukhli wal jubn wa dala'i dain wa ghalabati al Rijal. That um, this beautiful hadith, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from grief and sadness, from weakness and laziness, from miserliness and being cowardly, and from being overcome by death and overpowered by others. So, this beautiful short doha, the Prophet is expressing so many ethical uh, values here that we as Muslims. Uh, as true, and that is that we don't want to be known as lazy. You know, we try very hard to be hardworking. Um, so one of the good habits you need to bring to the marriage is not to be lazy, just sitting in front of the couch and just watching video games or something like that. You know, um, but being able to be industrious and working very hard. Don't allow your life to be filled with sorrow and weakness and sadness. Uh, it was a long hadith that the Prophet talked about, you know, that why we should not. And Allah mentioned to Allah, that we are a people who we don't grieve and we don't fear um, because of what we believe. And the Muslim situation is always good for him. So one of the good qualities that we have to have in the marriage by both spouses is to be hardworking. The second one is to be tidy. You know, if you have a home and you're not a tidy person, then you're going to end up really creating a lot of friction in your marriage. So you've got a very early developer system. The one I recommend is by a little Japanese woman called Marie Kondo uh, that has developed a beautiful system. Um, so she teaches us how to be tidy. You do it once and then you just maintain it for the rest of your life. And it allows you to, to have your house in such order and such um, you know, a beautiful way from from your socks to your books to your everything. She has done a beautiful uh, job in terms of advising people. So you have to try to be tidy as a Muslim. You know, we learned with the grooming that, you know, you don't just be like anyhow, you have to be, you know, well-groomed and, and tidy and, and beautiful looking. Punctuality is very important in a marriage. Uh, one of the problems that will happen is that punctuality is so visible that it is very easy for people to see it. And so um, the two of you as a couple come late to an event, everyone notices it, you know. And so they begin to look at you differently. Even though you're very strong and good believers, they begin to think lesser of you and they begin to depend less on you. So when the discussion comes up, we have in the party, you know, who's gonna bring roti? And then they mention your name and everybody said, no, don't give them to bring roti. We're going to be waiting with our curry and two hours after they're going to show up with roti. So what happened, people begin to pull their things from you and begin to dis disrespect you because you are not punctual. So they don't have any reliability on you and you don't want to have that label, you know, because our religion is very, and punctuality has nothing to do with time management. Punctuality has to do with priority. If you have surgery tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, you will be there at seven. How did you find yourself to be so punctual so quickly? It is because the event was a priority. You gotta catch a flight, you're there. But when you don't consider the event a priority, then you can come late, you got a wedding, ah, no man, we'll go two, three hours later, you know. Try to develop a good habit of punctuality and respect for time. Keep promises, this is one of the qualities that if you don't have it, it will produce hypocrisy in you. The prophet mentioned there are three signs of a hypocrite. One of it is to keep promises. So it's really important that the husband and wife try to keep their promises. And it happens very, very quickly. Usually, the more familiar we are with a person, the less we keep promises to them. It should be the opposite. So we will keep a promise to a stranger. We'll keep a promise to our boss. We'll keep a promise to some far out friend or relative. But our close people, we tend to feel it's okay to break the promise. Oh, tomorrow I'll take out the garbage. Yeah, you don't. And she call you up at night, 10 o'clock, you know. Hey, you're coming home. Can you bring milk? You show up at the door. She got her cereal waiting, excited. 
and you don't bring the milk. You know, after a while, they begin not to depend on each other. And keeping promises is really a big, big thing. So may Allah help us to um, learn to do that in your marriage. Another good quality that's important is cleanliness. You know, there's an, an important aspect of our faith at Tuhur Shatul Iman, that cleanliness is, is half and part of your faith. And so that will affect your marriage. If one of you are very dirty and the other one is clean, you will get lots of conflict. So these are some good basic habits that as a husband and a father that you need to at least keep. And of course, there are many others, but we're just touching a few that I think was important. And then it comes to bad habits. Jealousy. I think we spelled it wrong here. Um, so jealousy is, is one of those interesting things. If you have a little jealousy for your wife, that's okay. But when it becomes where you are really, really become so jealousful that you stalk in your wife, you question in every move she make or your husband, you know, if you just look in the direction of a girl, you start to go overboard. When you have too much of it, I have a good friend of mine who lost his marriage because of that, you know, so you got to be very careful about jealousy. It's nice to, for someone to be a little jealous about my husband or wife, but not too much. Be very careful about it. Discontentment is one of those things which is really bad as a person because discontentment means ingratitude because instead of focusing all that Allah has given you, you're focusing on what you don't have and getting miserable about it. You know, so a discontented person is never happy. No matter what you give them, they find a higher goal. You give them a Toyota, they want a Mercedes. They, they are never satisfied. And they're always looking to go to another place that they don't have. And so they spend their life trying to find these elusive goals unhappy all the time, unaware of how blessed they are and how much you have. So you don't have to have the, the, the Michael Jordan, Nikes and or whatever it is, boots, you can be just as happy with it as a regular boots. You know, when you begin to, to reach into places and not being happy about what you are, then at least in the gratitude. Um, if I had more time, I would go into more detail with it, but we, we don't have that much time. Materialistic. If you have one of your spouses of, is very materialistic, he's always worried about money, always worried about how we get acquired, always concerned about getting cars and stuff and house and all of that stuff, and then looks at people and judge them based on they're successful because they own stuff, then something is wrong with that person. Their religion is not properly ingrained in them. We cannot be materialistic. You know, everything you have is from Allah. Just be grateful for whatever you have and don't live your life just running after the material things in the world because you have to leave them anyway and they destroy every good relationship you have. Procrastination is one of those things which is defined as the intentional or habitual putting off of something. And it creates a lot of problem because we see the, the things which has to be done, the projects which have to be fulfilled, and weeks passing, and we just leave it and we leave it and we wait. And, and there are a lot of research done in procrastination of why people procrastinate. We can't go into all of that right now. But if you're one of those people, get the education. Because there are people who are like, they like to wait for last minute. There are people who avoid. They are, they, some of it come from your childhood, the way you're raised and all of that. So if you are a procrastinator, you need to go and get the education and learn what is it that triggers this and how you can solve it. Controlling behaviors. Uh, you cannot understand like the man, he's in charge of the marriage, but it's not about controlling like a dictator. You know, where only your opinion counts, where only your decision matters. And that when you speak, everyone must follow it, you know, and that you use your power that you have to exert this kind of um, coercive, you know, force on everyone else. This is not the Muslim husband. You know, if you are a control freak, and you have the desire and the need to always win and be in control, then you need to understand that you have not understood our religion and you need to go and get help. You need to go and get counseling for that. But it has no place in a marriage, in a good marriage.